today we're going to be talking about how to do a semi-realistic burnt wood effect for your miniature bases. We're going to be doing a hobby spotlight today on a ghrelin earth. This is honestly probably one of the most underappreciated and underused uh, items that you can purchase for your hobby needs. A ghrelin earth is essentially at its core a crackle paint, but in my opinion we're able to get a much better controlled crackle than you could by simply just buying something from like Liquitex or something off of the shelf. Uh, it takes other pigments okay you're better off kind of painting it after it's dry which is exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video as you can see here I've used this to do a burnt wood effect which is exactly what we're going to be doing today I'm gonna to kinda of take you through step by step on how I do that using some miniature bases we're gonna whip those together using XPS foam real quick but another well more traditional way of using this product is as you can see here in my little Star Wars diorama is just to simply lay it on and paint on top with a series of dry brushes. So we're just going to be using a bit of XPS foam. This is basically insulation foam. You can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's if you're here in the United States. Other hardware stores will probably have stuff like this as well. Um, we're basically going to be cutting it into strips as you can see here but the real trick to this is staggering the way that you put these strips on and I will show you what I mean in just a second. First and foremost you want to lay out your foam regardless of what thickness do you decide to go with and you're going to take a wire brush and the trick to this wire brush method is just dragging the brush all in the same direction. In this case I'm doing it lengthways across the foam and this is going to add a faux wood texture to the surface of the foam and then we can cut everything into strips. As you can see here, I've laid out all my strips and glued them onto the base, and as you can see, I've staggered them, so if I have a full plank, then I have two half planks, then a full plank, then two half planks, etc., etc. The idea here is you want to try to get a full plank on the outside edges, as that'll make your life a lot easier when it comes to cutting off all the excess. Next, you want to go around the rim with your razor blade at the same angle as the base to make sure that you get a flush, smooth surface all the way around. Next we want to inspect for any defects. Anywhere where the wood texture is touching each other, we want to get the space back in the planks. The best way to use this is to use your finger as a guard up against the back side of the blade, lay your finger against the base, and then very lightly cut against the very edge of the wood planks, nice and slow. Because of the wood texture that's already on the planks, the blade is going to have a tendency to want to follow that wood grain texture, even though this is just foam. So use a nice sharp blade, go nice and slow, and if you need a pair of tweezers to pick the excess out, go ahead and do that. And you're going to do that in between all of your planks. Once you're satisfied, you want to go ahead and paint these planks up to do a natural wood finish. This is typically what I use, Gortharm Brown, XV88, and then a slight dry brush of Xandri dust when everything's all set and dry. As molds, I thought I would use this as a bit of a learning experience. So I put the base tone down on both of them, and on the right one I did XV88 first and then an Agrax Earth Shade Wash, and on the left I did the Agrax Earth Shade Wash and then the XV88, followed by a dry brush on both of them. Now, as you can see, I feel as though the right one is pretty realistic, but honestly on camera, they're both pretty much par for the course. There's just a little bit darker tones in the one on the right, but that's about it. Starting in with our Agrellin Earth, I want to basically lay this into some low spots to help hide those low spots, as well as to work it across the surface. For me, I want to cover about a third of it. Now, I ended up putting it on a little too thick in some places, mostly in the low spots like what you can see me doing now, gooping it on, and I actually had to scrape some of this off and put a little bit more on. So just be aware that when we're doing it in small amounts, meaning just the surface of the planks, you can put too much and it just doesn't dry properly. So we want to put a nice, even coating across the surface that we're doing here. And then there is a trick to this. Once you've gooped it all on and gotten it where you want it, you need to take something like a toothpick or even the back side of your razor blade and scrape it back out of 
the cracks in between the planks. This is going to help to bring the realism back in and go from looking like mud on the ground to looking like this burnt texture that we want. Now you can't put it back in the pot, but honestly you're using so little of it, you might as well just wipe it off on a paper towel. But just go through and make sure you hit all the cracks and crevices as best as you can and get it cleaned up. You may even decide to redistribute some of this around in places where you maybe didn't put as much down as you probably should have, but just get it cleaned up as best as you can. Now depending upon how you want to do this you have two options. You can either base the crackle in black or base it in white and then hit with a black wash. I've seen it done both ways with people in my community, however my opinion is that the best and most realistic texture that you're going to get for a burnt wood effect is going to be to black bomb it, paint it black, and then hit with a very light dry brush of white. In my case I have a secret weapon. I actually end up using Tamiya weathering pigments and you'll see that in a second. Now that we've got this all black bombed up, you want to go ahead and take your weathering pigments. If you haven't seen my video on how to make weathering pigments, if you can't afford them, go ahead and check out that video. But basically what we want to do is we want to use the sponge side of the applicator that comes with this set and we want to very lightly dry brush it onto the surface. You want to make sure that you're going in the same direction, in my case vertically, or if you spin it horizontally. But the reason for this is that any streaking that is created through this is going to add to the wood grain texture and make it look like burnt wood. If you go against the grain that you've created in the wood, it's going to go from looking like a natural burned wood to just not looking correct at all. It's not going to look burnt, it's going to look like snow effect on top of a ghrelin earth. It's not going to work out. This looks great with just about any miniature, but in my opinion warm tones such as reds and oranges are a great way to go. Um, you can use this for pretty much anything. Like I said, I'm going to be using this for doing molds so that all of my heroes that I want to have this base can have it. I'm also going to be doing a few other variations so they won't all look identical. Again, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel out a lot. And if you really liked it, please share it around with your other hobby groups. It helps the channel to grow. It would mean the world to me. All the love and support you've shown this channel as well as my other social medias has just been astounding and I really appreciate all the love and support. As always, I hope your display case is always full and your pile of shame never runs empty. Thank you so much for joining us guys and until next time, I will see you in the next one.